Welcome to Impact Farming, where we introduce you to the people and ideas that will have a massive impact on your farming operation. Brought to you by Farm Marketer. Sit down, start the engine, and let's roll with today's show. Have you heard? Season 2 of the Pioneer Made to Grow podcast with host Andrew Campbell is back. New topics, trusted industry voices, more expert ag advice. Find it wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts. Hello and welcome back to another Impact Farming show. Today I have a great returning guest. I have Derek Deary joining us once again. Welcome back, Derek. How are you? Hey, Jersey. Thanks for... Uh... Thanks for connecting today. Looking forward to the conversation. I am doing very well. Good. Me too. I am excited to have Derek back on the show. For those of you guys following along, this is our second Impact Farming episode together. And we've done a series of expert corner segments all about grain marketing. Today, we're going to be continuing on with that. And I'm really excited to chat about five grain marketing mistakes you can learn from. So I'll do a quick recap for those of you guys that have not caught the previous episodes. Derek Deary is a grain marketing specialist at FarmLink Marketing Solutions. And today, really what I want to dive into is asking Derek about the common grain marketing mistakes he sees as a producer in Saskatchewan and as a grain marketing specialist. So I'm excited. How about you, Derek? Yeah, absolutely. I'm looking forward to having a conversation from the lens of, of our farm desk, but uh, also the lens of what I've learned working with farmers over the years as well. Good. We're going to do a little bit of a contrast to our last episode. In the last segment we did together, we were talking about the technical art of selling grain, which is grain marketing and the goal of turning grain into profit. So I sometimes find those tips are amazing, but equally beneficial at times is looking at the flip side and looking at some of the mistakes that we make as producers that might be costing us money. So I know you have a great list of the five top grain marketing mistakes. So are you ready to dive in? Yeah, you bet, Tracy. Good. So, yeah, again, looking forward to, to to talking about some mistakes and and some maybe perhaps common failures that uh, that I've experienced as a farmer that we've we have made as farmers over over the past. So we can we can learn from them. So and thank you for having uh, me today, Tracy. And you know, as a producer and a green marketing specialist, we, we've got five lists, five, you know, five common green marketing mistakes that we've seen over the years that we'd like to cover. And uh, like anything else, sometimes we get used to doing things, you know, a certain way, you know, the way we do things. And we don't realize it can be detrimental in the long run or not, not really serving our greatest potential. Um, and the same thing rings true with the grain marketing plan. And you know, just because producers may be familiar with doing things perhaps a certain way, and it may have worked well for a period or it may have worked well for one or two years, uh, that doesn't really necessarily mean it's the best way to accomplish things for the farm. So, or it may not be the most optimal way to gain the most profit for your farm. And again, I, we love and I love to help producers make smarter financial decisions regarding their farm business. So can I start with the first mistake that, uh, that we've recognized, Tracy? Yes, let's do it. Very good. Okay, so starting with mistake number one, and this is one that uh, rings very true for myself and that we continue to be intentional on improving for our farm is um, selling our grain without identifying uh, financial goals. And there could be a lot packed into that. So again, mistake number one would be when we sell grain without identifying financial goals. And then producers should always look for, you know, a way to start with a visionary, more high level question, like what are my financial goals? And, and the reason for this is because goals define a purpose for the strategy. Um, and, and, you know, goals vary for many different farms from succession planning or increasing on farm storage and, and, and sometimes may not even know exactly where to start for goals. That's why we got to ask ourselves these questions about what are our financial goals? 
Uh, you know, an example of the goal for our farm is to build stronger financial hands. And to achieve this goal, we need more on-farm storage. We have to increase our working cap uh, capital and uh, build a more effective green marketing process. So, you know, we're not forced into short-term sales and we can plan for back and loading certain crops and we can, uh, we can just accomplish more with stronger financial hands is one goal that, that we have. Perfect. So I know I've heard you mention before, it's essential to sell grain with a final goal in mind. Do you want to speak to that a little bit more? Sure, Tracy. So let's start with the basics in regards to that. So we discussed previously grain marketing you know, it's not entirely a new idea. You know, we recognize that many producers may not be aware of what exactly it is, what green marketing is, and the advantages of developing a customized green marketing strategy that focuses on goals. So a strategy focused on a goal for that business. And reviewing further, so green marketing, that's how we define it. Green marketing is a series of informed decisions and subsequent actions that turn green into profit. And it considers both market analysis and marketing decisions that put the producers in control of their grain. And when it comes down to making these informed decisions and, and acting on them, uh, you're working with that final goal in mind. So with our farm, we want stronger financial hands. That's the overreaching financial goal that we're working towards. You know, like anything else in life, goals create a purpose. And purpose engages the decision maker in a process for further business. And to get to the final destination, you need to go through the journey to get there. Planning, execution, and then arriving at that final business goal. Okay, okay so goal setting, that's a big one. Everybody is familiar with that. Any business person. Now, if we're new to grain marketing, even some experienced people, it can take some time and thought to create that goal. And it can be pretty daunting, right? Because heck, what's my grain marketing goal? That's, that's pretty big, right? Would you agree? I agree. And it's, you know, they're vulnerable questions to ask. And you gotta, you need to identify goals for your farm and talk about where you want to go. Like it's, it's an uncomfortable uh, task to accomplish. Yeah, absolutely. To me, <laughs> shouldn't it be as simple as I just want to make money? <laughs> I'll let you expand on that. Do you want to just really dive into your number, your number two point? Yeah, absolutely. So let's get into of our five, you know, five mistakes to learn from. You know, mistake number two that that uh, we've listed is creating a strategy and selling grain without a proper team in, in place. So. So mistake number two would be not building that decision-making team. So you've got this goal, you know where you're going. Uh, do you have anyone to help you get there? So producers, you know, we don't need to be making all, all of these decisions on our own 100% of the time. It was producers as myself, uh, what I want to focus on is, and, and what we're great at and what we enjoy is leading our business. So leading our farm business. And green marketing includes big transactions that deserve a strong, unbiased second opinion. We'd strongly encourage producers to consider their decision-making process team, or do they have a decision-making process team, and can it be built out? And some questions producers may want to ask themselves are, you know, starting with, are you executing sales without a process? Uh, what do you do consistently before saying yes to a system? yes to a particular grain sale. You know, as a producer, you need to have the best team to collaborate with. And you're the leader of, of your business. So building that team um, and, and, and leading it can, can really help you accomplish your goals. So consider, uh, you know, some common teams and structures that we, that we see. A good advisory team typically includes agronomist uh, to help grow the crop, manage a crop, you know, financial advisor, grain marketing advisor to help implement strategy. Uh, but a key point to that is once you build that team, you really need to lead it. You know, it's your business. You have all these people in place and it's important to lead that farm decision-making team. Um, does that provide clarity, Tracy? Yes. I love it. I, 
I know you have a personal story that you wanted to share. Was it at this point that you wanted to share or do you want to move on to the next one? My next burning question for you. Sure. You know, Tracy, so a story for, you know, as I relate a decision-making team to our farm, Tracy, you know, I look at it as each farm is accountable to somebody that's important to them. And, you know, for us, that's my family, you know, the generations that have built the business equity to where it is today. And that's a commonality across a lot of us, a lot of farms in Western Canada. Uh, For the most part, we're self-made farms, whereas we've built equity over years and years of hard work to build our farm businesses. Uh, And each of us are accountable to the people that help the farm business get to that stage. So as we step forward, uh, with the support of our decision-making team each day for our farm, it just, just really helps me as a decision-maker to uh, accomplish the best decisions that impact the business of whom I'm accountable to. So, and I can't really underline that enough. There's, there's a lot of weight to that statement. You know, for us, it's uh, extremely important to be accountable to our family and to make sure we're making the best decisions that impact the work that they put into this business. Okay. So creating a goal, building the team, collaboration. Should we move into what happens and what about when it's time to sell? Do you want to go there? Absolutely. So we covered uh, two mistakes and what to learn from the trace. Let's get into number three and number three is a fun one. So Number three that we have listed is marketing grain without knowing your ROI, your return on investment, and also marketing or making marketing decisions only and solely based on return on investments. And Tracy, I know it sounds like a paradox. I'm telling you market grain based on your return on investment and then flipping it over and saying, don't make marketing decisions solely based on your return on investment. Can so you let's get into that. Expand more. on that one. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. So let's talk about both sides of the coin. And uh, if we look at it, if we widen our perspective a little bit and look at it is, you know, how I'll explain on our farms, every year for our farm, every season is exceptionally different and dynamic. Uh, and return on investment is more of a moving target. Having this target provides us with the initial focus. However, with all moving targets, we do need to look at what's behind it, what's in front of it. We need to step back, look around, look ahead of that target as well. And with each year being exceptionally dynamic, we really have to look at what the market analysis and strategy is telling us. You know, some years you may have to hit that target as soon as you see it. Other years, such as uh, at time of this conversation, Tracy, we're into October. There are roughly 10 months left in the marketing year. There's lots of runway left in market searching crops. We may be hitting a return on investment target today, but perhaps it's not quite time to sell because there's more runway, more time to uh, market the crop. And we, we need to sit back and, and let the strategy play out. Does that make sense? Yes. I hear you. I hear you on the farming end and then on my media company side, it's not always as easy as, okay, it's this, right? You got to look at everything that's coming up and how's, how's everything looking going forward, right? Those are big decisions, moving targets, right? Absolutely. Is that correct? Saying that? Yes. And I know it's, I know it's a paradox to list the the initial statement in this mistakes, but they're moving targets, Tracy, and you need to, uh, we have to respect the dynamic situation with, with each of each year that, that we have ahead of us. So. Okay. Okay. So why don't we shift gears a little bit? Producers, as we know, can be approached with many different avenues to sell their grain. So here's one I love to chat about as a business owner as a farmer, why don't we talk a little bit about decision fatigue and how it affects the decisions we make? Absolutely. I love to talk about decision fatigue, Tracy, and know the, you know, how the grain marketing space is or, or what it looks like. It's extremely noisy. And 
Um, we know that marketing decisions include, you know, data, market information, and all that must be funneled down to a decision today to sell or should I wait? Simply, should I sell my crop or should I wait? And the challenge with this is there's just so much information and we don't know what's entirely accurate as producers um, because there's so much noise in the marketplace. And often as producers, we can end up selling because of this decision fatigue uh, based on emotion uh, throughout certain times of the year. Yeah. Well, and I, I want to kind of loop back to what we spoke about in a previous episode. And on that note, if you guys haven't tuned into the other impact farming episode we did and some of the segments I've done with Derek, I would strongly encourage you to do that at this point. We've chatted a lot about different areas of grain marketing. So check those out. But where I wanted to go with that, we were chatting about decision fatigue a little bit in a previous episode. And you said, you were a little bit different on times of days. And as business owners, we know sometimes we have our peak time of the day where we're bright and bushy eyed and we're great. We're fresh during the day. We make great decisions, but we all know as the day wears on and we've made about a million zillion decisions, we're probably pretty tired. Right. And I think that's going a little bit because this is super important. If we are making if we're tired and making decisions at times that we are tired and not having those um, third parties to help us out, we're just making emotional decisions, right? You know, absolutely. And a little exercise that each of us can do. If you, uh, if you were to take out your phone and Google, how many decisions does the average human being make in a day? I think it's 30,000 decisions is, is what the, the first response comes back from Google. So if we're making 30,000 decisions per day, how fatigued are we at decision 20,567? And perhaps we should maybe make those important green marketing decisions earlier in the day, as you say, decision perhaps 10 through 1,000 versus almost 30,000. Because the risk, as you say, Trace, is you get fatigued we start to give into our biases and with so much noise around us, the confirmation biases and, and other biases that impact our decisions start to uh, start to influence us negatively. Okay. And a little bit of a spin on that. We're talking about emotions. I know you have some really neat thoughts on this. We know as producers, human beings, we have our emotions or gut feelings that can contribute to us selling our grain and making those decisions. So do you want to dive a little bit more into why it is a mistake to rely on emotions? Yeah, absolutely. So let's get into mistake number four, which is marketing based off of persuasion and emotions. So persuasion, you know, it cannot occur if there is already a concrete plan in place. Let's say if you if, if, you, if you planned ahead, for example, and you have this ongoing plan in place so that the producer is comfortable uh, and you're not gonna be influenced by a place of fear or hopeful potential reward, perhaps to the market continuing to go up and up and up. Um, it could even be relationship-based. And, and this happens to me a lot, uh, you know, especially after harvest, I'm, I'm fatigued and, and uh, I have a lot of contacts in the industry and I, I want to be friends with many of these human beings. And it's, it's hard to say, no, you're afraid to uh, burn a bridge with uh, some of your contacts that are, may want you to contract a grain or get into a certain seed program, for example. Uh, this leads to decision fatigue altogether. Um, when you have a plan in place, Tracy, you just, what I find is you don't need to worry as much about, about persuasion and the decision fatigue is, somewhat minimal, uh, you know, just like, you know, laying out your clothes the night before or packing your lunch before you're going to have a better day ahead and you're not going to be influenced by that chocolate bar at 10 o'clock in the morning. And you may go for the, that run that you're planning on going uh, for that run at lunchtime. So planning ahead is extremely important to avoid uh, persuasion and, and being impacted by emotion. Okay. I love it. There in 
every part of business, they always talk about having a plan, your big business plan, your grain marketing plan. And it's so true. If you don't have a big business plan or your grain marketing plan, there's nothing concrete and it's wishy and washy. Like you said, somebody comes at you. Oh, good. I'll go after that option. And then a little bit of that squirrel effect, right? That we as entrepreneurs and business owners can fall prey to. So the fact that you have a plan in place, your grain marketing plan, it also takes a lot of steam that you don't have to think about. Oh, right. Here's my plan. Put that aside. Let's stop worrying about it. Right. Absolutely. Okay. So I would like to switch gears a little bit here. I know what you were trying to about before. There's a lot to unpack and it seems that there are so many moving pieces. Do you want to expand on that? Dive into that? Absolutely. So I would like to get into a little bit more on the emotional, you know, the emotional influence and, you know, emotions, Tracy can be very, very important, you know, it's, you know, it's good to be passionate about our farm and, and have strong emotions to the work that, that we do. Uh, but the risk is making marketing decisions based uh, on fleeting emotions and, and reactions or gut feelings isn't the most innovative strategy for grain marketing. And we call this reactive selling. And that's selling grain based on this perceived opportunity a gut feeling or this emotion um, that is influencing the decision with reactive selling. And, and basically it's selling without a price or a process in mind. And, and not only can this be a risky mistake, but it can also cause even more stress and more anxiety to the producer because um, it's subconsciously you're just pressuring and pressuring yourself. If I don't sell today, then perhaps the price is going to go um, down even further for, as an example. So it's just important to, to recognize uh, reactive selling. Maybe you're selling based on something more like this, again, that gut feeling, and there may be, may not be really any strategy involved in that, you know, for a lot of farmers that could be the starting point for us. And, and this is where we start working with farm and, and implementing strategy rooted in market analysis and, and, green, and marketing decisions which uh, which again result in in two questions that we ask ourselves you know am I being convinced to sell or should I wait mm-hmm. kind of way to put yourself in check with these emotions again am I being convinced to sell today or should I wait based on the plan we have in place so we encourage all producers that we work with to have a more of a proactive mindset instead of a reactive mindset and having a plan in place helps take the emotion out of grain marketing um, which at the end of the day means less stress for, for us producers. When I talk about our, our fifth mistake, I'm, I'm going to take a step back a little bit. And before we were talking about emotions and uh, persuasion for the grain marketing and being more proactive versus reactive selling. And um, something that I'm going through as a decision maker at the moment here is, I don't want to call it a crisis because crisis is a pretty big trigger word, but a bit more of a decision-making crisis when it comes to marketing our grain for 2022 is as many farms out there we were severely impacted by drought in in the past year of 2021 and this resulted in a lot of pain and you know pain as far as some contract buyouts you know contracts that were made with good intentions which ended up costing um uh, quite a lot of money i'm talking like hundreds of thousands of dollars for a farm on on these decisions which were really good at the time but unfortunately just didn't produce the crop so how are we going to make decisions for 2022 when we're so influenced on our emotion for what has happened in this current crop year so we got to kind of put ourselves in check with our farm discuss this as a decision making team and try and take out that emotion uh, out of selling our next year's crop and make the most objective decisions we can based on strategy. The reason I say that, Trace, again, is as we get into our fifth and final mistake, it is a simple one, which is often the hardest thing to do, but don't be so hard on yourself. As producers, we're exceptionally hard on ourselves, Tracy. Yes. I think as all business owners, we can be hard on ourselves, but mistake number five would be um, 
don't be so hard on yourself as a producer. You know, I think that is so common. That comes with the territory of being a business owner. If you make a mistake, the weight is on your shoulders, right? So of course you're going to beat yourself up. And if you make a good decision, you should have done better, right? (laughs) Or is that just me? I'm a tough manager for myself. (laughs) We all have the battle going on inside of our our mind that's uh, critiquing our decisions constantly throughout the day. So we need a way to kind of put that into check, Tracy. Fantastic. That's a great one to end with. Now, go ahead. So just digging a little bit deeper, Tracy, taking us not a step back, but just elaborating a little bit more about, you know, mistake number five, not being so hard on ourselves. Just highlight the, you know, what the task is of the decision maker and to market green and make these decisions. It's extremely difficult. You know, marketing is dynamic. Um, you know, performance metrics are more than just the net average selling price. There's farm constraints that need to be balanced. Uh, every decision maker makes mistakes and, and the best way to be more resilient and to mitigate these mistakes from happening would be to just build a solid decision making team, get tight with your decision making team uh, for marketing, leading on a grain marketing advisory firm like Farmlink could really help your business and find some alignment to protect your enterprise. Um, and, and this is one really important key point here is just try not to cloud your judgment with online forums and engaging in negative conversations or, you know, looking at analysis that is not really beneficial to your process. Um, and these are just a few things that we like to uh, help producers avoid. Fantastic. Okay. I hope I'm not jumping the gun here again. We covered the five mistakes, right? We did, yes. We covered all five. Good. There's so much in there and you share so much great wisdom. It's hard to keep track of where we are at all times. Did you have anything further that you wanted to add on to the five mistakes or should we roll into chatting about the value and why producers should consider paying for grain marketing services to avoid these mistakes. Did you want to dive into that? Yeah, let's carry forward, Therese. There's a lot to unpack in and what we talked about. And I think we ended the five mistakes and on a good note of you know, try not to be so hard on yourself or go 12 rounds with yourself as a decision maker. Within these five mistakes are for uh, to provide some learning strategies and tactics about how to avoid them. Um, Stepping forward here, what I would love to highlight with uh, your audience is that green marketing isn't this short-term, you know, get rich quick scheme where all of a sudden you're going to be marketing in the top 10% of the market and have this exceptional uh, ROI. Um, Not only can a green marketing advisor help work with uh, some mistakes and help develop the strategy for, for your farm, I look at it like from our farm is, Every year and every season, Tracy, we're dealt a hand of cards. And do you play any cards with your family? Any any fun card yeah. games, Rummy? I'm a business yeah. owner times two. I have enough gambling and games in my life. <laughs> yeah. Well, we can we can take this example as something as soft as playing playing Rummy with uh, with my family after supper, or or in, in regards to some businesses where they're really high stake poker games. So if you look at the card hand that we are dealt every single year it's exceptionally different you know sometimes you get a winning hand and prices are going to be exceptionally high and you've grown the crop and things will be awesome other years we receive this hand where you have to play a little bit more disciplined a little bit more uh, close to you where you need to hit these smaller return on investment uh targets throughout the year and make it into the next year so you can get this new hand dealt to you so ultimately it's about you know long-term results and and how to achieve long-term sustainability we really need to review and change our strategy and examine you know what we have and can do better and 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 the most vital points and formulate tactics and close those gaps to maximize futures opportunities. So just like to give that example, it's something our clients and I, we talk about a lot and, and uh, we look at it through the lens of a challenge and through the lens of uh, opportunity every single year. 
Fantastic. And, you know, to me having, I feel like I'm beating that dead horse all the time on this show in general, not just with you, Derek, because I am passionate about bringing people, the people and ideas that will impact their farming operation. And to me, tapping into professional services like FarmLink, like XYZ that's out there for farmers in the different areas of their business, I think it's untapped potential and a huge part of building a team and maximizing profit. So I love giving you guys the airtime to share your wisdom and highlight the benefits of working with a grain marketing advisor, right? So Derek, if producers would like to connect with you or your team members at FarmLink, how can they do that? Sure. So to start the conversation, uh, talk with a grain, a FarmLink grain marketing advisor by visiting farmlinksolutions.ca. There's a section there, Tracy, where um, there, you can follow more information on the value of working with an advisor. There's also a button that says connect with an advisor. You, know, you click that button and you can consult right then and there. Uh, visit our website, farmlinksolutions.ca. And I would love to mention to your viewers, Tracy, that uh, we have this new platform called Grain Fox. All of us at FarmLink are extremely excited about launching it and uh, having our Green Fox platform be available to farmers in Western Canada. And with that, we have a, a free 90-day trial to receive our market information and help farms achieve their financial goals. Okay, excellent. So Derek, thanks again for joining us. As I mentioned before, I really appreciate you coming here, sharing wisdom, talking about grain marketing, the strategies to turn your grain into profits, and also some of the common mistakes that producers make that can cost some money. So I've really enjoyed this segment. Thank you for joining us. I appreciate it. Thank and- you, Tracy. You guys in the audience, thank you for joining us. I really appreciate it as well. If you love this episode as much as I did, like it, share it, get it out there so other farmers can hear the great wisdom and information that Derek just shared. Thanks so much, guys. See you next week. Bye-bye. You've been listening to Impact Farming. For more great episodes and articles designed to help you manage and grow your farming operation, head on over to farmmarketer.com. Don't forget to sign up while you're there. We will see you on the next episode.